If you want a luxury SUV, but you've only got £2,000 to spare, what can you do? Well, it's not a problem really, because you could get a Mark III Range Rover for that kind of money. In fact, that's the same price as the 22-inch wheel upgrade on the latest Range Rover, and that car starts from £100,000, which is nuts. You should also consider a Mark I Porsche Cayenne, or how about a Mark I BMW X5? Here I have three luxury SUVs all for under £2,000, but which is best? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you won't miss a single upload. Car Wow. We're gonna start this video by looking around the cars and they've actually been supplied by this lovely chap here. It's Taylor from Taylor Made Cars. So you supplied these, they've all come in at £2,000 or less. How much was this Range Rover? The Range Rover was £2,000 on the nose. Okay, two grand exactly. So let's have a look at the condition of this car. Bumper, a little bit scuffed, and there's bits missing here, isn't there? Yeah. Okay, you wouldn't bother replacing that, would you? Not really, and not at this value, no. <laughs> I noticed that there's some fogging in the headlights. Will that affect the rest of the headlight? It looks a bit foggy in there. Possibly, eventually, it might affect the Xenons, yeah. Okay, I love the fact you've got some little wipers. Here at the side. That looks a little bit loose there as well. It's had a bit of a nudge, hasn't it? Probably, yeah. Interesting thing, right? The latest Range Rover starts on 20s. This is on 18s. It actually looks all right on 18s. These are designed for comfort. Yeah, look at that sidewall. Yeah, it's nice. I like that. Nice Farmer spec. Yeah. That's kind of surplus to requirements, yeah. and I guess I, that's not working properly. I think that's for a puddle light. Right. And that's missing. Okay. I think we will put that back on for when yeah. we drive it. These running boards are a bit rusty, aren't they? I wouldn't really trust Dan in on those. You'd probably go through them. <laughs> Common Range Rover thing again. <laughs> but the rest of like, the bodywork down the side is actually okay, isn't it? It is, but if you open the door, yeah. you will see a bit of rust down there. You're not exactly selling this to me. Is, is this? <laughs> I'm is, just being honest. <laughs> I'm an honest salesman. What can I say? Well, that's an oxymoron. Right, anyway, so here at the back, rust. Yeah, common. Looks like the tinting effect that someone's applied is um, bubbling up, yeah. That's not good, is the it? The heat's got to that, I think. But what's going on here? When I picked this up, the rear light fell out oh. and it was hanging down here and I didn't realise um, until people started flashing me and I got back here and noticed it was hanging tried to repair it, but I can't repair it because only the top part of the tailgate opens. One of the key things about the Range Rover is the split tailgate. Yeah, so only that bit opens, the bottom half doesn't. Bollocks. <laughs> so I, oh, I'm going off this it. car right now. <laughs> Out of the three, this has the highest quantity of issues. What, a Range Rover with the highest quantity of issues compared to other cars? That's not... Very unusual. That's very unusual, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, let's move down this side. Where's the common bit of rust, Matt? Oh! <laughs> oh, no. That is actually a hole. Yeah. I think that will possibly fail its next MOT. Can't you cover it up with, like... You um... can put duct tape on it, yeah. Yeah. That's the wrong thing to do. Yeah. I wouldn't suggest it, but you can do it. And this running board's even worse than the other one. Yeah, the bottom of that's completely disappeared. I wouldn't even step on that. And the window's open here. Hopefully that's not because it doesn't go up or there's no window. The windows do work, but this does have a lot of electrical issues. Okay. So the radio doesn't work, the heated steering wheel doesn't work. Sometimes the steering column adjuster doesn't work. And when you put it in reverse, the main beams come on. Sold! <laughs> <laughs> now we come to the X5. Lovely car back in the day. This one, it looked good from a distance. Close up, I'm not so sure. Awful pink faded tail lights. And what's going on with this? This is the wrong color. These suffer with boot latches. Yeah. And to change them, you have to change that whole strip. And it looks like someone's got a second hand one that's the wrong color. Okay, so they've had a problem with the boot. Yeah. So I should check it because you've got reputation after that Range Rover yeah. for dodgy boots. This doesn't even open. No, but it does open from the center console. But it doesn't open from here? No. Which is where you want the boot to open from yeah. most. And it doesn't do that. No. <laughs> I do you say that quite proudly. <laughs> it does have a tow bar though. It does have a tow bar. You can go on holiday with it or whatever Maybe you tow want. the Range Rover to the scrapyard. Yeah, you could do that, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Wait, the number plate. Jersey? Yeah, it's from the Jersey Islands. So I think Jersey is an island. It is, it's not actually. Not, no, not oh, a set. I don't know. Anyway. I, don't know. I didn't do very well at geography. Let's move around the side. But before we do, I've just spotted this. A bit of rust it out of the tailgate. It's kind of a bit rusty, yeah. Is that common with these? Common, but it's usually only, the only place that these rust, really. Well, we'll They're usually pretty good. We'll see, because first thing I'm going to do 
is open the door. Doesn't have the holes like the Range Rover. That's all right, isn't it? And how much did he pay for this one? So this one was 1,800 quid. 1,800 pounds, so 200 pounds less than the 2,000 pound budget. Ah. Why is the paint on the top purple? I'm not too sure. There's lots of different shades of blue on this car. Yeah, I think it's had some paint in the past. And I think someone's had a go at doing a DIY job up there. It's had a little bit of a bang here, hasn't it? Yeah. Probably not terrible, but... No, it's not too bad. The front, very cloudy lights. Yeah, that's 20 years of weather. They're not going to be very bright at night, are they? No, They're going to need probably like not. And they polishing. might be an MOT issue as well. Oh, good. I like an MOT issue. Yeah. Right, let's just move down the side. Some weird bits of what looks like nail varnish. And there's a bit of pitting here on the mirror as That's well. That's weird. What's, why is that happening? Because the bases of them are aluminium and they just start to corrode over time. Oh, look, we've got the little extra mirror for our caravan. Yeah. <laughs> we've got the tow bar and the yeah, little yeah. mirror. But let me just check, just to be sure. Yeah, there's no rust like on the Range Rover. I think this looks like a tidier car. It's not bad, and I have driven this one. It drives well. Well, we'll find out about that in a moment. Finally, then, we come to the Porsche Cayenne. So let's have a look at this then. Taylor? Yeah? Why are you on a mobility scooter? Just a bit tired. It's been a long week traveling the country, finding all this rubbish. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> anyway, talk us around this can. First of all though, how much was it? 1950. Okay, so it's the mid-price one. In terms of the design of them, I think it's aged the least well. I've never really liked the look of these. Yeah, they tried to have the 996 front on it, it just didn't work. Yeah. Anyway, talk me round. Let's see what damage we can find. Well, you know, to be honest, there's not really that much wrong with it. You know, it's pretty clean there, all lovely, yeah, yeah, not much the, to look at. What about the wheels? It's just like someone's powder-coated the wheels themselves. No, that's aerosol, that's fine, yeah, don't that's worry fine. about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a cheap car, what do you expect? Is the reason you're on the mobility scooter so that we're going too fast that I can't yeah, notice no, anything? Let me fine. just check. Yeah, I'll come oh, yeah, back, come back, back, come back. Oh, hang on. There we are. What's up? There's nothing wrong with it. This is the first car that the boot actually works. Yeah, and Let the me... split tailgate Wait works. a minute. It doesn't... No, That's it... going to clonk you on the head, yeah, that it is. it doesn't stay up. But you can open the little hatch. Oh, it does? Right, let's have a look around the other Perfect. side. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. See, look, there's nothing wrong with it. All done, yeah, wait, lovely, lovely, wait, lovely, wait, lovely, wait, lovely, wait, 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 come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about this? <laughs> Don't run the camera and over. What's happened here? A dog ate it. What do you mean your dog ate what, like your homework? Yeah, yeah. It's just had a little nibble Why on it. Why would a dog do that? There's nothing wrong with it. You mean it's bashed another car or something? Probably, or it's probably had a light scrape at some point. But actually, despite all this, I think from what I've seen, which is very brief because you've whizzed around on your mobility scooter, that this is in overall the best condition for its exterior. I would call this concourse, it's mint. What kind of um, car shows do you go to? Concourse at the scrapyard? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Now let's check out the interior of the KN. So, Taylor. Yeah, come talk me through this. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to buy this or what? Well, I haven't damaged it, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so interior design, I quite like it. It's got a sporty feel to it. It sort of reminds me of my Porsche 911 996. And generally, it all looks neat and tidy, apart from there seems to be a button missing here. Yeah, that's pushed through the dash. And a bit missing around where the key goes in. But other than that, all right, apart from it is filthy. It is really dirty. I there. mean, who owned this? Look, there's like goo all over this centre console. Is that dry blood down there? Don't really like sitting in it at the moment. It's not very nice, is it? No, and it smells. I mean, you, you can't see that because it's a smell. You can't see smells, but sort of like the smell that might come from an illegal lab. Mm. It is a bit strange, yeah, I must admit. But everything in it works. Well, Even let's find the out. Works. Well, let's find out. Here's the key. I quite like the key. It's sort of cool that it's got like the headlights like the car. Like yeah. that, right? And one of them lights up when you lock it and unlock it. Oh, yeah, it does. I think they both should, shouldn't they? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. It's got a good stereo in it, this one. Yeah, so buttons, yeah, that all works, that all works. The that's only fine. other thing to note as well is that vent's got a little bit broken out of it. I think oh, yeah, just I where that. someone's clipped a phone mount to it or something. And the leather seats in these can get tatty quite quickly, but these are fine. It's all right, there's no tears in it or cigarette burns or anything oh, like that. Hey, look at this. I found some green leaf in here. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's what the smell is. <laughs> I actually think the smell is another kind of 
substance that's illegal. One that um, mm. attracts a greater penalty than if you're found with this. So what do we do about this? Because if we get caught by the police, we're driving a... a Maybe it's just herbs. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's, um, what, what, what do you put on, what is it like? You put on food sometimes? Oligano. That's it, yeah, it's yeah that's what it is. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah it's, it smells like pizza in here. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got some money here. Do I get to keep this money? Yeah, you can have it. Yeah, it comes with a car. <laughs> Brilliant. And what else we got, Andrea? There's more, okay. This is definitely not oregano. You know, if you sell this, are you effectively a drug dealer? If there's drugs in it, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> And look, there's a cigarette <laughs> that has been, part of it has been removed but not smoked. Why would someone do that to a cigarette? I don't know. Maybe this car's past is slightly questionable. Yes, I, I'm going to have a look in the glove box. Oh, okay, this is less dodgy. We've got some lotion. We've got a hairbrush with oh. Oh, a lot of hair on it. Oh, wait a minute. And some more leaf. your car insurance policy booklet some more leaf in there and then an unopened box of soap oh we'll have that right yeah we will definitely have that let's put all that back in there now let's check out the back seat so i'll just get into there quickly and i'll meet you back here don't crash it no. <laughs> I've got no sensors on it. Okay, the back is even more hideous. There's splattering, there's goo. It's pretty horrible in here, but actually the condition is good. It just needs a blooming good clean, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it needs a really good detail. It does. There are a few bits missing, like look, there's not the seatbelt buckle holder there, so you could prang your bum on that. So look at it. Yeah, this doesn't, that doesn't work as it should. And this doesn't work quite, does it? No. Yeah, oh, it went in! Well, right, I fixed it. It's a bit broken. Though, I'm going to charge you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a discount for my, my hourly rate is actually quite expensive. I've, I've, I've buggered it. You owe me money for that. You know what they say, you break it, you buy it. Oh dear, I'm not sure about that. What are all these balls on the floor? I don't know, I was going to pick them up, but then I thought better of it. So strange what's in this car. What's that? It's a key. Do you reckon that's to a safe house? Oh. Now we're in the Range Rover and two things. It's not as filthy and it just seems more luxurious. You know, we've got this ward panelling, which I quite like. I love the seats. Yeah, they're the really nice. The seats are so good. I almost want it just for the seats. Blue leather yeah. with white piping. I feel like this one is a lot of car for the money. Is this the cup holder? Yes. That is like way too complicated. Yeah, it, but it works. It does actually work. And that is the thing with brain drovers. Lots of bits don't work. And there's some items under here, which I don't, I don't know why there's all these bolts, but hmm. let's try and find things that maybe don't work. So let's check out the glove box. That opens. That's fine then. These all work. Does this armrest raise and lower? Yeah. Yes, it does. That works. Let's try some of these electronics because I know the electronics on these can be a bit yeah. sketchy. First things first, I'm going to press this button, see if we've got any faults coming up. It says check tail lights and check fog lights. And that's it. Ooh, no other lights no. on the dash. The seats seem to operate. That's all working, air conditioning is all working. <laughs> Horn's working. Try the lights. Now I notice here we've got like low range mode, we've got hill descent control, so proper off-road of this and adjustable air suspension. Yeah. Bear that doesn't work. It because might do. I'll be amazed if it does. I'm gonna put it all the way up. Oh, I can hear it. Oh. It's oh. going up. Yeah, because if that goes, it's so expensive. You've yeah. just written off the car, really. It's working. That is good. I like this. Let's just put on the stereo. The light comes on. That doesn't work. No. None of that works. Oh, it pops out so you can insert a cassette that you won't be able to listen to because it doesn't actually work. No. And the cruise control doesn't work. Are you sure this air suspension is working? It's still going up. It's taking ages. I don't know. It feels pretty high to me. You're starting to disappear. Are yeah. you still on your mobility scooter? I am, yeah. I'm sat down. Is this still going up? It's still flashing. It's up! Oh. You do look slightly lower than before. It is quite high. Yeah, let's, I'm going to move into the back. Let's, let's check out the rear seats. Yep. Oh, OK, right. Come. You might need to stand up. It's quite high. <laughs> yeah. So the air suspension works. It's lovely back here as well. Yeah, it's really nice. Do you know what? 
It's almost worth having just for the seats and I could put them in my house. It's really nice, isn't it? And it's got seated heats in the rear. Seated heats? It's got seated heats in the rear, I like yeah. seated heats. The seated heats are better than heated yeah. seats. They work in reverse, you know? Yeah, they do, yeah. I like <laughs> seated heats. Is this you, these McDonald's? No, that's not me, I'm on a diet. And what is that? Uh, Has someone been growing magic mushrooms in I there? I don't know, that's not mine. That module next to it on the floor... I'm not going to touch it. Well, maybe that I will. plastic thing, yeah. that's the light control module. I had to replace that when I picked it up because none of the lights or indicators worked at all. So you've already put money into this thing? Yeah. Well, we can't really drive it without any lights. It's true. And... Oh, this is lovely. That's in really good condition. It is well. in Look really good condition. I think there's a cup holder on the end of that as well. If you press that little button there. Oh, oh yes! It's like That's a face nice. lock. It's yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking it a lot. The BMW has a lot to live up to. Finally then, we have the X5, and I like the colour combo in here. And everything seems to operate as it should. Just a bit of dirt in there. Is that weed? No, not weed no, this time. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've actually tested this and everything in this car seems to work. The heated seats work, cruise control works. And you wouldn't lie to me, would you, Taylor? No, I'm an honest salesman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's an oxymoron again. It okay. does <laughs> have an aftermarket head unit with Bluetooth yeah. and it has hands-free. Yeah. Which is good, I want that, right? Yeah. And all the aircon and everything works as well. Aircon works. Well, I found something. What's going on with the, <laughs> the digital the, display? Yeah, the pixels have started to go so in So you said that you're an honest salesman and uh, everything works. That doesn't it, work. It works, mostly. <laughs> Usually um, that is caused by jump starting and things like that and a flat battery. It can uh -huh. affect that. Uh, a variation in voltage can affect the um, pixels in the dash. So you lose the information in that dash then? Yeah, but you can get it rebuilt. It's only 40 pounds. Okay. But obviously, you'd do that for any customer, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, for 40 quid. <laughs> I like it so far here in the front. Let's check out the back, come on. Yeah, same story in the back. A bit wet because it's raining and we left the it window is, open. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, have you validated this? I haven't, this it is exactly like this. as I bought it. The only thing with the back is, there's not really a lot going on. There's no seated heats. No, there's, there's no not. baskets in the backs of the seats. No. But it has got ISOFIX and it has got an armrest. It feels a bit more like a practical interior compared to the other two. Yeah, but it's worn well and it's reasonably tidy. And it doesn't smell funny. It doesn't smell funny. And that's important. Now we're going to compare the engines on these cars. So this Range Rover, it's got the three litre straight six diesel, which is actually a BMW engine, isn't it? It is, yeah. With all the dirt over it, it looks like someone's off-roaded this. So it puts out 175 horsepower and 390 newton meters of torque, and it drives all four wheels for a five-speed automatic gearbox. I think the gas struts have gone in that. I think they have, yeah. <laughs> Anything to know about this? How many miles has it done? Uh, so it's done 108,000 miles. 108? Yeah, not yeah, 180. No, 108 is okay. quite low mileage. Um, the gearbox has been previously rebuilt. Engine's really smooth, gearbox is really smooth. Mechanically, this one's actually really good. Okay, he does say so himself seeing as he's selling it. Moving on to the BMW, so why can't I open it? Uh, the bonnet cable's stretched. Okay. And I can't open it. Well, this is what the engine looks like on another X5. It's a 4.4 litre naturally aspirated V8. Puts out 285 horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque and it drives all four wheels for a five-speed automatic gearbox. How many miles has this one done? Don't know, I can't read it because all the pixels have gone on the dash. But I think it's about 140,000 miles. <laughs> A hundred and uh, not two hundred or three hundred. Who knows? Who knows? But we can't even check it because it's registered in Jersey. Ah, oh, <laughs> this is that. What? Let's just move on. <laughs> it could be a diesel. You never know. <laughs> it says four point four on the side, so that's fine. I, I believe. Might they just rebadge it, right? Yeah. It's got the four exhaust pipes. It has. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. Okay, now the Porsche. Finally, it has the largest capacity engine and a bonnet that works properly. 4.5 litre naturally aspirated V8, puts out 335 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. It has a six speed automatic gearbox. You get one more gear with the Porsche. How many miles has this done? 160,000 miles. Mechanically, this one's not so strong. So the gearbox is in a bad way. It either needs a service or a valve body, but when it gets hot, it jumps into gear, it jumps out of gear and it slips a little bit. It's not happy. And if you drive it, quite hard for a little while it does get quite hot and as you can probably see by that expansion tank some yes. of the coolant does leave it yeah okay so travel everywhere with some spare coolant yes okay let's get on and drive these cars
Ryan Taylor, we're going for a drive in the Cayenne first. I can hear lots of creaking coming from the dash. It does feel quite harsh, this car. Yeah, the it's suspension got... is a bit bouncy, like a bit hard over the bumps. Yeah, it's got quite a firm ride. I think that accelerates the noise of all the rattling from everything. It does have a sort of like solid feel to it that you get in all Porsches. It's, you usually feel it through the steering. I actually like it already. I can feel that it's driving pretty nice and it does grip the road well through these bends do you know what i'm going to put it into manual mode it's doing all right rides good at speed stable on the road it's responsive you know there's a lot of people going oh my god porsche building an suv but it totally helped turn the company around it's the reason why they can continue building things like the 911 gt3 rs which has just been released because this thing just made so much money for the company oh shame it's raining and a shame for you that the screen wiper blade seems to be missing from that side. It, it's actually there, but I think the wiper linkage is so worn it doesn't touch the screen anymore. <laughs> it's just waving at yeah. the rain. But it is a nice place to be, this car. I mean, apart from the smell. Yeah, apart from the smell. And the drugs, so if you get pulled over, you might yeah. get arrested. As I say, when it gets hot, the gearbox isn't quite as smooth as it should be. <sighs> it's such a shame. Is that what that exclamation mark is for? The oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> It's like yeah. someone just smacked me in the back for no reason at all as it changed down a gear it, quite abruptly. It does get a bit worse than that. Really? Yeah. That is a shame because I'm thinking I'm really liking this. The way it drives is spot on. I can quite easily get rid of all the nastiness on the inside. I like the design of the interior. I like the driving position. Feels responsive. It's a bit of me. You know, I like a Porsche, but I don't fancy a Porsche with a dodgy gearbox. What's with the um, we're filming. A porn video? <laughs> no, it is just a porn video. We're just going to pull over and have a lot of sex. Do you want to join us? <laughs> nah, it'll be shit. There's one last thing I want to do with this car, Taylor. Let me take one guess. Right, because there's specialist timing gear up here. That might be a clue, yeah. <laughs> yes, we're going to launch it. Do you know what it's supposed to do? Not 60 in? No. Seven seconds. That's quite quick for a 4x4. Four four. But is it still quick? Let's find out what it really does. I'm brake boosting it. So what's it going to do? Oh, gear change there. 7.78 7, seconds. Do you reckon that's because the engine's lost some performance or because you are sat next to me? I reckon it's your driving. Right, and the BMW doesn't feel quite as light to drive, but less rattly. I can see what you mean about it feeling heavier. A bit more. <laughs> it's more of a relaxed drive, I think, as well. I'm just sit back, troll the car like this, you know, classic way for passing your driving test. Do you think you'd prefer to drive it? every day over the Porsche. Yes, I do actually. I think it's a better everyday car for cruising around. It's not quite as much fun, not quite as lively, not as sporty, but overall a bit more of a chilled experience. And I think I'd be happier driving this for a longer distance, especially because I wouldn't be constantly worrying about that blooming gearbox failing on me. Yeah. Well, that's something else could fail. We just don't know what it is yet. That's the thing with a car like this. You just never know. It's like a ticking time bomb. <laughs> so, so I'm going to buy one of three ticking time bombs from you. Just when is the fuse set for? That's the joy of having a 20 year old car. When's it going to blow up? Who knows? <laughs> this one feels like it's got a longer fuse <laughs> than that Porsche. It sounds a bit fruiter in some ways than the Porsche, but fruiter in the wrong way, like there's a hole in the silencer or something. It sounds like a wet fart. Decent throttle response. Oh, wait a minute. Diff bush. At the front of the diff, yeah. uh, that when you accelerate, it resists the diff from lifting up. Yeah, and this and one stopped doing that. Well, it's just worn, so it lifts up more than it should. And you get that clonk. Yeah, it's just a rubber bush, quite um, cheap to replace. Thing is though, all those hundreds and 200 quids start to add up when there's lots of them. And this car was bang on £2,000, so I don't really want to spend anything on it. But that is exactly why these cars aren't worth a lot of money. Yeah, it's true. But other than that, that clonk, I mean, I could probably put up with that. Well, you're not going to be jabbing the throttle every time you're getting it, are you? Actually, to be fair, you're so right, because it is smooth. The gear changes themselves seem really good as well. Yeah, I like this. Also, I feel like you sit slightly higher up in this. Yeah, and that's one of the things with an SUV. You do want that imperious driving position. I'm not sure whether I'm necessarily higher. It's that the dash is lower, so you get a better view yeah. forward. Let's pick up the pace and see what it feels like when it goes around some corners. I'll pop my foot to the floor and it's just holding at three and a half thousand RPM. Right, let's just try it in a manual mode for the gearbox. So I'm in first. No, it's not roughing past four. 
I think we might want to turn around and get it back to your yard. I think I'm going to give this a miss now. It was doing so very well. <laughs> it was all right. I mean, no, it was all right until it wasn't all right. You've and broken it. I've got to buy it then, yeah? You break it, you buy it. <laughs> I think the fuse was a lot shorter than we thought and the bomb has exploded. Right, Taylor, this car's supposed to do 0 16 7.2 seconds, but it's obviously not going to do it now with this issue it's got. You ready for it? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's time it, see what it's going to do with the special timing gear. Will I even get to 60 miles an hour? I'm sceptical. <laughs> I'm doubtful too. <laughs> Maybe I'll even blow up, who knows? Come on, stay below. Stay below, keep going. Oh. Come on. What speed are we at? 50, 55. I think 60. 14.4 seconds. There we go. Almost double the factory 0 to 60. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like to be up there. No, just needs a service. Would the service involve putting in a whole new engine as well as oil? Yeah. <laughs> right, let's take this back and go for the car that's probably going to be even less reliable, the Range Rover. First things first. Not only is there very little performance, there's also a lot of noise. It is a bit tractory, isn't it? So it's all very smooth and slushy, but very shouty and slow. And I've also noticed that the car seems to just decide where it wants to go on the road. There are a couple of slightly warm bushes, especially at the rear. Yeah, so basically I can feel that. So it gets knocked by a bump or a camber change, and then the rear axle is basically steering it, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit baggy, a little bit loose. Doesn't feel anywhere near as precise as the BMW, and on a completely different playing field to the KN, which felt totally sorted. But I do like sitting, I was going to say in it. I'm not so much in it, I'm more on it. And do you know what? We're in town now and I'm liking this one the most in town. I'm sitting up high, I've got great visibility, you know, the steering, you really have to say, I want to go left or I want to go right for it to do anything. So it doesn't matter if you're like, oh, well, yeah. you're still going straight. It's a bit like being at home. You just sat here in an armchair. Yeah. And the world's going by, like you're just watching it on the telly. They're like no other car, really, aren't they? And that's what I've always liked about them. They do have a distinct feel that is just Range Rover. And it makes you feel good about your life right up until the point that something goes wrong and then you absolutely feel terrible. How long do you think the fuse is on this one? You never know, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? It's just a complete game of jeopardy. This actually seems to have the least problems, which is quite ironic. I have looked through the paperwork of this car. Someone has spent about £2,000 having the gearbox in this car rebuilt. And bearing in mind, it's only done 108,000 miles. I'm going to do an emergency brake just for a laugh. <laughs> Did all right. <laughs> I nearly slid into the footwell. <laughs> OK, here's come some bends. This is not the Range Rover's forte. Ah! went round all right. As long as you drive it in the way that it wants to be driven, it's absolutely fine. Oh no, look, I'm getting the rear wheel steering again. It's like sailing a kite. Here comes another bend where I feel just how precise that rear suspension is right now. Oh. <laughs> it's like there's some huge crosswinds, but there's not. The wind isn't blowing much today. Taylor, each of these cars has an issue. I mean, the BMWs is an obvious issue. If we can somehow fix that, that would be the one that I'd have. The Porsche has this gearbox which could go at any time, but the rest of it is pretty blooming sweet once it's cleaned up. This is just a lovely experience, though it's a ticking time bomb because it's a Range Rover and that rear suspension, I mean, that could catch me out. One last thing to do there, let's launch it, see how quick it is. I wonder if the BMW, even with its broken engine, <laughs> is quicker than this, but we'll find out now, we'll get and launch it. Okay, Taylor, this car's supposed to do 0 to 60 in 12.7 seconds. Do you think it's gonna do that? Yeah, I reckon so, yeah. You reckon it's gonna I'm do it? I'm confident, yeah. I think you're wrong, let's do it. Brake boost. Ooh. Took off well. A lot of noise. No, it's sort of dying now a little bit. 12.3, you were right. It did better than they said. Thankfully for it, quicker than the broken BMW, otherwise that would have been really embarrassing. Do you know why that was? Why? Rust is lighter than carbon fiber. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so then what's my final verdict? Well, looks as though you can get a luxury SUV for 2000 pounds, can't you then, Taylor? You can, yeah. You can get a lot of car for your money. And a lot of problems as well. 
for instance, I really like the BMW X5. It's a great all-rounder, but got that problem with the engine. I can fix that. That's minor. Okay, if you can fix it, I am still interested in it. Then there's the Porsche. Felt really sporty. Loved the way it drove, but that gearbox issue. I'm not sure about the gearbox in this. It might be a bit of an expensive fix, but it does still drive. It does still drive. Then there is the Range Rover, which it just feels special, but it's got that rear suspension issue, which is, you know, you just really got to concentrate with what you're doing all the time. It has, it is a bit wallowy, isn't it? Yeah, so, hmm, which one to go for? Well, I'll tell you what, I've got a plan for these, all of them. How about we do a deal, 5,000 pounds for the lot. That's a tough choice, that's a lot of money off. You've got to fix that though, you've got to fix the engine, five grand for the lot. You're really kicking me. <laughs> All right, you got a deal. Okay, let's do that. So £5,000 for the lot. The reason I want the lot is that I've got some things planned for these cars that you don't want to miss out on. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on and you'll be able to see exactly what I do with these cars next. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss out on the videos.